I was so fortunate to interview Maya Angelou three times. And on one occasion, I was really asking her what, what really was the catalyst for her growth. And she talked about great suffering and great love. You know, that actually there is great suffering in the world, but there is also great love. And both of them used rightly really will help you to grow, but you have to meet them and you have to meet them honestly and bravely and, and trust that who you think you are probably won't succeed at this challenge, but who you really are can and will. At, at, at the heart of all the work that I do as a coach and I, I, I know this is true of the work that Robert does as a, a coach is something that we either call creative disruption or, or I tend to call it loving disruption. And I, I call it loving disruption because it, it is important that people recognize that they are being loved and held so that they feel safe enough to allow themselves to be disrupted. And when we talk about the death of normal, we're, we're, we're talking about that that recognition that business as usual cannot go on as usual, that the status quo is done as a, a viable way of going forward. Now, at first glance, that's sort of like, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. But once, once you get past that very understandable reaction, you always find another level, another way of being, another way of seeing, a whole new set of possibilities. And, and so it's this continual game. I remember sitting with a client once and they told me their goals and I said, well, we could do that and you could redecorate the inside of your egg or I, I could break the egg open and see what happens when you hatch. And, and creative disruption is, is the, it's not really a tool, but it's, it's that which allows us to hatch into new and new versions of ourselves. One of the aims of this mastermind is to make sure that we are thinking our best thoughts at least some of the time. You know, right now, a lot of us are experiencing a great degree of mental uncertainty, a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety, and we have to cultivate a relationship to that stress, a relationship to that fear, where we're able to like meet all of that in an honest and true way and and be able to find a way forward i've always felt that there's a relationship between emotional honesty and spiritual clarity you know if you pretend you're not afraid you can fool some of the people some of the time but i think what actually ends up happening is that by not being emotionally honest you block spiritual clarity whereas if you can be emotionally honest and you can say well look i am afraid i am worried yeah, this is causing me stress. To actually meet that with honesty, I think then opens up an opportunity for greater spiritual clarity and thereby you get the inspiration and the grace to support you. It's grace under pressure, you could say, but it comes from emotional honesty leading to spiritual clarity. One of the things that I think is, just makes mental wellness so much less of a, a, a a challenge and a, okay, I've got to really work on my mental wellness is when you start to see that at our core, and this is at the core of spiritual resilience, wellness is what we're made of. And so emotions will come. You, 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 you absolutely, you, you may as well feel what you're feeling because you're feeling it. And, and underneath the, the roller coaster of emotions that, that, that many of us are going through a lot of the time right now, there is that constant hum, that constant presence, that constant wellness. And, and learning to navigate both the roller coaster and the river that it's floating down on the back of a boat, that's really at the heart of, of having a consistent experience of wellness, even as your emotions are maybe going all over the place. In A Course of Miracles, there's a line which says, if you're relying on your own strength, you have every reason to be apprehensive, fearful, and afraid. And uh, there's a line right next to it which says, if you knew who walked beside you, fear would be impossible. And for me, I notice that I'm, I get really afraid when I'm trying to do life by myself. But the moment I 
make a step to increasing my life support, all of a sudden I can feel like my nervous system settles. I know that I'm held by something greater than myself. And there's, there's hope actually. You know, there's a hope that actually I'll come through this, but I won't come through it by myself. I'm gonna to have to come through it together with my, with my social network and with my spiritual team helping me every step of the way. I remember the most money I ever spent on coaching. I spent hundreds of thousands of dollars because I wanted to take on this big project that was what ultimately became Super Coach Academy. And what was interesting was I, I didn't really get all that much from what the coach said or what the coach did, but just knowing I had the support of that coach, knowing I had that person in my corner was enough. And occasionally I would also ask them questions, but a lot of the time I just, it was just allowing somebody to walk beside me who I knew I could rely on. And that, that kind of life support is, is one of the most valuable things about any mastermind. And we're particularly hoping it will be in this one. One of the phrases that's been coming to mind a lot recently is that you can't shrink your way to success. I think I've been thinking about it because I've known the temptation in me to really shrink right now. There's a contraction that wants to happen most days, you know, um, it, and it's a safety response, I imagine. But um, at the same time, you know, I, I know, and it's counterintuitive that this actually is the time to expand. This is the time to actually step forward. This is the time to be courageous and brave. And when I want to be courageous and brave, I've got to, I've got to have a friend help me out with that. So Michael, you're my friend here for this. Um, and together with a team, I or know- Be buddies. Of, yep, buddies. We'll be able to do this together. I've had the, you know, uh, the experience of running several masterminds now over the last five years in particular. And I can honestly tell you in each and every one of those masterminds, I've set myself a goal and I have done something that I would not have done if I had not been on that mastermind. You know, I've set myself some sort of a stretch, some sort of a growth. And with the support of everybody else on the mastermind, you know, I've really been able to look back and say, that was the mastermind when. And, you know, and I'm, I'm hosting the mastermind, but I, I, the only way I know to play is to play all in and be part of the masterminds too. On this occasion, I get to do it with you, Michael. So now I know there'll be even more space for me to be able to say this was the mastermind when, you know, and I'm looking forward to finding out what that stretch is, but I know it'll be there for me. And, and that's what I want for everybody, that we use our mastermind to explore what spiritual resilience really means and maybe be able to uh, accomplish something or experience something that we were going to get around to one day, but we're doing it now.